Hi guys and welcome to Tutorial Tuesdays. I'm Rob, or Panix, and I am the content manager for Yaosh GFX. Um, just before we get started, we're hoping to bring Tutorial Tuesdays to you every Tuesday, either from me or um, any of the other Yaosh directors. If they put up a tutorial, it'll have a nice green thumbnail and it'll come up on a Tuesday. So um, I hope that you can learn from us and eventually become a Yaosh GFX director yourself. Um, now this is the second time I'm going to try and record this because um, I've just done it, I've done the entire tutorial and I wasn't recording the screen. So let's try all that again. Essentially today I'm going to teach you how to do that. Um, it's quite simple, easy text um, from scratch. No light kits, no nothing. So I've got all my layers here but I'm just going to do them again. Um, so you're going to go to MoGraph, Mo Text and I like mine centered so we're going to, go to object middle going to hit E so I can bring it up and then I'm going to use the same same font as I did last time so click on my text and I'm going to use impact you're welcome to use any font you like um, obviously it's, it's your uh, final uh, hang on Enjoy JK where the hell is it what there we are right Bad day at the office. I'm gonna write out panics. Um, I suggest blockier fonts. They tend to work better for the um, the projects that these sort of things use. But use whatever you want. So we're gonna take the first one. We're gonna copy it. So it's Control C or Command C if you're on a Mac, and then Control V, Control V. So we've now got three layers. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the top two, and we're gonna make the first one 150 deep. Um, and we're going to go to caps. If you've never used caps before, go to caps, fill it cap, and we're going to leave it at about five. You can play around with all these things for the effect that you're looking for. Um, and now we're going to highlight these two. We're going to bring them forward. Um, we're going to show them again, and we're just going to bring it round so you can see what exactly what's going on. We're going to make them both 35 deep, and we're just going to bring them forward just about that much. Um, so that you've got slightly sticking out, you'll see the sort of 3D element maybe slightly further just get a nice bit of depth to it and so now you want to write, you've got two layers, you want to bring the first layer just make it zero depth, so if you hide the other two you've actually just got a completely flat layer so those are your, those are your three text layers now we're going to take a plane uh, so you go to the box cube thing, hit plane and we're just going to make it a bit bigger and now this is with, without using a single light kit, I'm doing this entire tutorial. And then we're going to rotate it slightly away from us. No, nope, like, not like that, like that. No, towards us, sorry. And then we're just going to use E, and we're going to bring it up, almost out of the shot. Copy, paste, that's Control c and Control v again. And we're just going to bring that one down and rotate it. So it's almost flat, less rotated than the other one, and that's what we're going to do. Now you can see I've already got pre-built materials. That was from when I recorded the tutorial before, but we're going to go through them again. Um, what you're going to do, you're going to create a new create a new material. I'll just use this one, and you're going to go to luminance, and it didn't quite work last time, so I'm going to make it 150 for this one, um, and you're going to apply that to the top plane. And then you're going to create another material, or you can copy and paste it, and change the luminous down to 75, about half, and apply that to the bottom plane. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to colour the text. Now, you can colour it in any way you like. I've got a few sort of techniques that I use. Um, I like making the back one a colour, so red. But also, I like making the, um, the caps quite a sort of nice shiny colour. So we're going to make them white. Now, how do you do that? You bring another colour onto it. Now they've gone white, you see. So you go into section in tag. So you tag and then hit R1. Not R, the exclamation mark, R1. And you'll see that just the cap has gone um, gone white there. So we're going to make the other two. Now this grey was too dark last time. So we're going to just bring the lightness up to about that. Um, and we're just going to drag it onto the two top layers um, so we've got a nice colour. You can change all of these colours in Photoshop anyway and, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to go to render settings now and you're going to want to have global illumination with IR and QMC still image on 
ambient occlusion and depth of field. If they're not showing here, right click and you can click on any of these things here and they'll go on. So you want those three selected, global illumination, ambient occlusion and depth of field. Um, and you're just going to hit render with all the layers all the layers showing just hit render um, and while we're doing this I'm going to just hide all of these layers in Photoshop and just give it a nice cheeky um, gradient <laughs> that's the wrong way while that's rendering now with global illumination on your render times you will notice will go up um, but bear with it because it's a great effect. So you can see it's doing like, it's called an irradiant cache pre-pass. And now there's a main pass, 5 of 8. <coughs> I genuinely don't know what these things are. Um, I'll just take this opportunity to tell you that we're on Twitter. So if you have any questions, we're at Yaush GFX. Or you can contact us specifically. Um, let us know if you have any problems or if you have any questions. A lot of them are already answered on the channel, so go and check there first. But if you do have any further questions, hit us up on Twitter. And one of our staff team will get back to you. Um, so, yeah. Um, this is taking slightly longer than the last one. I think my computer's decided that it doesn't want to um, participate. We'll see how long this tutorial's been so far. Six minutes. See, I was at nine minutes last time. So, I've... Um, Done better than the second take. Yeah, so if, if you have any questions, then um, let us know. Or if you think you're up to the, the challenge, definitely apply. Um, we're always looking for new directors, new people to submit great content. And um, make sure you keep subscribed to the channel. Um, we'll have tutorials, speed arts. Uh, we've got some more exciting, different type videos coming out soon, um, courtesy of our partnering managers, Skybricks and Midnight have both got little projects planned. So um really looking forward to that. Now this is taking quite a little while to render. Um and I'm rendering with eight gigabytes of RAM on um quite a powerful Mac. Um so sometimes these these can take a real like quite a long time with um uh, global illumination on, but it is definitely worth having it on. Um it will impact the quality and the um just how your how your piece looks as a whole you, you'll get a much nice much nicer and cleaner feel um now I might have been inclined to slightly up the bottom light it's quite dull under there um so maybe change the luminous on the bottom plane to i don't know say a hundred maybe a hundred and twenty but you can start start to see the corners at the top lighting up and you can just see the corner of the p lighting up as um, bring that in while it's doing that. I just got a text. Who's text me? No, Twitter. Um, you see my Twitter buzzing in the corner. And we are done. So you're going to file, save as, and you want to have it as a portable network uh, graphic or PNG. Mine says QuickTime Portable Network Graphic because I'm on a Mac. And you're just going to hit OK. And we're going to call this, I would call it Chute 1, but we're going to call it Chute 3 because we've got Chute 1 and 2. Um, I'm going to close your picture viewer and you're just going to want to hide the bottom two layers. So you've just got that flat layer showing now and you want to re-render it. This will take a lot less time. <coughs> Sorry if I sound a little bit um, off. I'm, I'm not feeling too great at the moment but I wanted this ready for Tuesday. So um, you can see in the corner I'm recording it on, on Sunday night. Um, so that is done almost instantly. We're going to save as again. And um, we're going to call it Chute 4. You can name them specifically if you want, uh, like top layer, bottom layer, but I I tend to just um, label them the number. You can see probably all the files um, as part of my latest projects. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to group these guys and hide it um, so they're not in my way. Now, I'm on a Mac, so I just drag them in, but you just file place, and don't move them once you've placed them. Place one and then the other without moving them because otherwise you'll have to go about like realigning them. Yep, place. And then you're going to want to drag the other one in and place again. Now you're thinking, but Rob, that doesn't you can't that's totally illegible. So you want the bottom one, the the 3D element on the bottom. And for the time being, we're just going to hide the top layer. And you're going to go to gradient overlay. Now these are all sort of these are my preferences, so you're welcome to change them. I like a light gradient overlay with a soft light. 
Um, maybe an inner glow, but again, very light. Um, let's bring it to white. Bring that up, but then take the opacity all the way down so it's just sort of hinted. That's probably about right. Bevel and emboss, and just a depth of a thousand and size of zero. It's very, it's very faint what that does, but you will notice it. And then just to top it off, a nice drop shadow with a distance of zero. So you get a nice shadow all the way around. And let's take that down. Okay. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Um, now you're going to bring up your top layer again. Now, I've rendered it in grey, but if you've used Photoshop a lot, you'll know that that doesn't make a difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to your um, adjustments. You can either take them here or they're at the bottom here. And you're going to want to put in an invert. That's going to invert everything, so we don't want that. You can either hold down Alt and click between the layers. You'll start to make a clipping mask. Or you can right-click, create clipping mask and it will do it to just that one. Now we see that that white, uh, that grey has now become a beautiful white. So we're going to click on this layer now, give it a gradient overlay as well, but very, very faint. Um, maybe a cheeky inner shadow, but again, very, very faint. Um, and I like a nice bevel in a boss because it just adds to the lighting. Um, size is zero. You'll note, <laughs> excuse me, um, you'll notice very slightly what it does. Um, and that's that. And what you're going to do, want to do then, is create another layer under the invert, so it's automatically a clipping mask. Drag your elliptical marquee tool across, and then because it's inverted, you're just going to want to pick a nice black colour and whack that on. And that's not done anything. Let's take the gradient overlay down a bit. No, that's not doing it. Why aren't you doing that? Okay, let's drag that above that. Ah, here we are. Now you're just going to flip that to white instead. Maybe put it on a few times. It's not doing it. Right, I don't know why that shine isn't working. It worked perfectly for the last one. So, um, it's very, very faint. And I think that's probably because our gradient is too high. So, I'm just going to take the gradient down. And you'll see it ever so slightly. Maybe a slightly darker grey would have done the right the right trick. But it's irrelevant. It looks nice. It's very clean. And if you want to change the colour around, you go to your adjustments again. Hue saturation. And create the bottom one into a clipping mask. <coughs> now if you just drag this around, you'll see that the colour is going to change. But if you hit colourize, the whole thing will change. So we'll get a nice bump up the saturation. And we'll get a nice sort of blue going. Uh, let's just make a nice Yaosh purple. A uh, GFX purple. So let's bring that up nice and nice and bright. And you'll see straight away that you get that sort of depth, but at the same time it's very clean looking. And there's a the nice 3D element there as well. Now you're welcome to explore light kits. Um, you'll get even better effects. Um, and just muck around with it, play around. So this was what I was going to sh building to show you, which is all hidden. Um, happy times. This is going well. There we are. Similar again. Um, Let's just hide all that. And this was how to make simple glossy ch glossy text in Cinema 4D. So thank you very much for watching. Um, make sure you're subscribed so next Tuesday you get another tutorial. See you later, guys.